my contract in November was to, uh, for the Commissioner, was to come and deliver, design and deliver a leadership and wellbeing programme for the ranks of sergeant and inspector. About 47 officers attended three courses over, over the three-week period. And what we were looking to do in that, uh, in that period was to deliver to them the evidence base around what is the best leadership style for policing in the present day. And what, what I was saying there is we need a more supportive leadership style. And what I mean by that is it's a leadership style that is firm when it needs to be because we've a job to do, but they're also is able to adapt to the needs of their staff, particularly around well-being, particularly around development. So that was one of the big areas that we were looking for, giving them the evidence base. And then what we did was we looked at the skills that they require to be more supportive leaders and also look at make them more self-aware. So this wasn't about this. What it was about was trying to look at what their strengths were as leaders, get them to understand why those strengths made such a positive difference but also look at the areas that they, that they could develop. And, and fortunately, um, they were very open, the whole three groups were very open to developing their skills. For example, um, the marine boat crew that will normally be out tackling uh, uh, drug trafficking, what they're doing now is getting involved in neighborhood policing. So it's, it's a whole different approach to yes, I've got, a, I've got a, a, a task here, which is my primary role, but all of the leaders are asking themselves, how, how can I impact on the wider aims of the Royal Gibraltar Police? So it's perhaps not a case just of policing by force, but also by, of policing by having a, a more tightly knit connection with the community. Absolutely. So one of the things we talked about is that we, we are very good, certainly in the Royal Gibraltar Police, they are very good at keeping the people of Gibraltar safe. What we don't do sometimes is, is the public confidence side. And so what we're talking to them about is how do they get the messages out about this positive work that, they're, that they are doing. And I know now the comms team are working very closely with the teams to actually identify this good work, use social media, use yourselves, to get the message out, because that was one of the things that was that was uh, lacking lacking in the past. What that does, of course, is increases public confidence, and we've got some great examples of where members of the public have actually approached police officers and said to them, "Thanks very much for what you're doing. You're doing a good, great job." Particularly around Christmas and with with the high demands of COVID, uh, to see that sort of response from members of the public tells us that RGP, in terms of leadership and service delivery, are, are moving forward significantly. So you felt it was natural then to, to bring the chief inspectors and the superintendents into this framework that you're hoping will influence the, the policing style of the RGP? Absolutely. So um, for me, when I had a conversation with the commissioner, we were really clear that the people we wanted to deliver the training to initially was the sergeants and inspectors. Why? Some people might ask, well, don't we want to go top down? No. The people that interact most closely with the community, with the public and deliver the service to, are the police constables. Who, as leaders, has the biggest impact on them? The sergeants and inspectors. So we wanted to go down up and the results that we've seen over the last three months justify that decision.